Alright, what is going on, you lovely ladies and gentlemen of the world? EVO side tournaments are officially over. By the time I actually post this, the main tournaments will be in full swing. The schedule is mad weird, and I have no understanding of what the hell is going on. <laughs> it's like, it would for convenience's sake, for the ease of understanding everything, they really should have split it up. So it's split up in two weekends, right? And so you have a bunch of different regions, something like six or seven different regions, five different games, and they're going to stream the top eight of each region and each game. So that's a lot of, that was, that's a lot of matches to stream, right? And so that's the way it's split up, is it just kind of feels ultimate, I mean, it's not random random, but it is split up, so like there is no one game or one region that dominates an entire day, but I kind of wish that was the way it worked. So like one day, you just have NA running through all five of the games, or NA West running through all five, oh, I guess that's actually one thing that might not work, is because... I don't know if all of the games are split up. I assume, like, Skullgirls or Guilty Gear Strive. You know, like, the games that actually have good netcode are probably not split up as much as the other, you know, like, Street Fighter and Tekken that are such garbage. Actually, Tekken isn't, now that I'm thinking about it. I but, like, That's another weird thing, is I think Street Fighter V has an NA West and an NA East tournament, but Tekken 7 is just NA. <laughs> but anyway, so it, it would have been just for convenience's sake and for knowing how that, what the hell is going on without having to double check the schedule every single time and uh, one tournament ends to see if you're interested in the next one. Um, I, I kind of do wish, but I also understand why they didn't do it because then, you know, like if people are only interested in the NA tournament, then you just have that viewership for that one day and then they'll never show up to another one, right? Same thing with any of the other regions. If they're only interested in that region then they would only show up on that one day and overall you wind up losing viewers entire sections of your potential viewership based off of what region is going on at the particular moment rather than having all this overlap where people just tune in and be like hey i wonder which region's going on right now and then maybe they stick around and continue watching right i kind of sort of get that but at the same time it's just whew, the schedule is not easy to understand definitely will not be something you can easily remember but uh so anyway i'm but i'm excited so i want i do want to see Skullgirls. i want to see how exactly the post annie patch has shaken things up how the game is doing now overall because i did i think that had its own side tournament as well right and i watched a little bit of it i remember watching a recent Skullgirls tournament and i am pretty sure it was evo but it might have just been something else entirely and i'm just blanking on it but there were a couple of lizas involved they lost <laughs> they weren't winning but they were still involved which is uh marked improvement over the past of my attempts to find Eliza in tournaments, so that's good at least. So I, I do want to see what's going on there. Beowulf got buffed too as well, but I'm just... I, I have to admit one thing that has gotten very boring for me as a Beowulf fan is just pretty much the guarantee that if I'm seeing Beowulf there's like a 75% chance that they're running Cerebella Big Band, and there's a 100% chance that they're at least running Big Band. Like, I've never seen a Beowulf, a competitive Beowulf player, not running Big Band at the same time, and that just bores me. It's the same thing with Marvel vs. Capcom 2. I will watch the hell out of a Marvel vs. Capcom 2 tournament, like, once every three months. <laughs> but after you watch one, it's kind of like, alright, I need a break from this, it's just the same shit over and over again. So I'm good. I got my Marvel vs. Capcom 2 fill. I'll come back in a little while, right? I mean, that's kind of false because nobody's really playing Marvel vs. Capcom 2 tournaments anymore. But st oh, they didn't bring that back! I mean, it makes sense why they didn't bring that back, right? Logistically, it's just not feasible since they took Marvel vs. Capcom 2 off, uh, like, the remake that actually has rollback. It's pro It runs on GGPO, right, if I recall correctly? But they took that off the market when Disney acquired Marvel. Bad times. But yeah, so anyway, like that would have been kind of cool to have that because that was supposed to be part like that was before Evo got canceled or for 2020, 2019. <laughs> Who cares? Uh, that all fell apart, right? They were supposed to have that Marvel vs. Capcom 2 exhibition match, and now obviously that's not going to be happening. I don't know why I talked about that, but while we're talking about the game, Street Fighter Five, boy, they fucked up. I don't know what's going on over there. Like you have all the rumors surrounding how Street Fighter Six, you know. Ono's departure, Street Fighter 6 seeming to kind of just be shaping up to be complete trash and having to scrap the entire system and restart from scratch. So you don't really know how all of that has impacted Capcom as a whole, or at least the division responsible for handling fighting games, but I really feel like they dropped the ball 
with Oro and Akira, at least not having them out in time for Evo. To be fair, again, I don't think it really matters because I don't think there's going to be anywhere even near the same amount of eyes on this tournament as there have been on previous Evos, just part of it because of all the drama surrounding the tournament series in the first place, but also it being online only. There's really no buzz around it. I haven't seen anybody be like, boy, I can't wait for Evo, right? Whereas previously I'd be seeing all kinds of talk surrounding like oh i'm getting ready to go to evo i'm practicing up for evo i don't see any of that right now so it kind of just seems like it's just another day so it's going to be interesting to see if there actually is any real viewership for these tournaments but the main thing for because i'm kind of curious you know how y'all feeling about it because personally i do want to see a little bit of skull girls but other than that i don't give a shit about the other four games but what i am here for is some street fighter and tekken drama surrounding the garbage ass netcode because you know the tournament matches are going to be lost slash one based off of you know like combo drops setup drops timing drops because their netcode is so shit and i want to see it happen i am so excited for it i'm so ready for it it's just amazing and you know the devs won't care either like right like they've had years upon years to care and then you have capcom which as far as i'm aware has basically just maintained radio silence about the garbage of their netcode whereas harada for tekken has just continually over and over doubled down and been like y'all don't understand shit you asked for rollback i gave you rollback he didn't say this part but basically i implemented it in the worst way possible in a manner that makes it so it has none of the redeeming features of rollback and it ba it just it appears to be delay based netcode because that's functionally what it is the rollback is so worthless that it may as well not even be there but you asked for rollback i gave you rollback so y'all can shut the fuck up don't ask me for shit what a douchebag <laughs> just admit your netcode sucks just admit your game on a mechanical level sucks and fix it you dumb bitch <laughs> it blows my mind how it, like it's not just like whatever fuck all y'all i don't care right it's not even that it's like he keeps trying to justify it he keeps trying to tell everybody he's wrong or like everybody else that you're wrong he's right when like everybody in the world that has ever touched that game knows how full of shit he is capcom's manner is definitely better like at the very least just ignore it <laughs> just be like whatever what can you do we're done with this shit <laughs> we don't care anymore but harada is just continually like you don't understand anything i'm smart you're not i know what i'm doing you don't fuck all y'all and then you just point to the game like this is not the result of somebody who knows what the fuck is going on <laughs> take your head out your ass get a little bit humble because you need it you need it desperately you need it you need at least some form of decent introspection and self-awareness to understand that you are being a massive asshat and nobody likes you anymore the reputation of your game is in the gutter at the moment like it went from an all-time high to leroy being released to an all-time low i have not heard a single damn positive thing about tekken since leroy was released that's hard to do with a game that had so much joy, so much positivity surrounding the entire community. It's wild to me how hard that fell. And Harada just keeps dumbling every single time he opens his mouth. He got to put his foot in it, make an ass of himself, and continue to just dig, dig, dig that trench he's building. It's wild to me. Anyway enough shit talking i mean i can't i love shit talking tekken and especially harada because that dude just deserves all of the shit talk in the world for the way he behaves and the way he like I mean, you clearly can see like that is one egotistical motherfucker that clearly does not deserve the ego but anyway I, that's that's why i'm interested in evo ultimately is because i want to see the shit storm that's going to result from it but obviously like nobody's going to care right because the uniclear side tournament we all know uniclear is online fairly subpar not it's not anything special and you could tell when watching those matches that there were matches where the players clearly had a bad connection where they were dropping everything they were missing you know like and it, you couldn't blame it on nerves because you've seen these players already play previously and they were landing everything they were popping off they were doing really well and then you see them in the next match and it's like 
you're watching a completely different player. And that's what a bad connection does. It makes you into a completely different player. You can't play like you normally should. That's going to happen. But the stakes are a lot higher for these games, right? The rewards are a lot higher for winning. So people are going to get pissed. I'm ready. But the other thing, too, is that it, like, it's clearly not going to matter overall. It is one of those moments where it could... Like, it could be the catalyst for change, right? You see something horrible, you see all this negativity surrounding an element of your game, and you realize, like, oh, shit, okay. Like, tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands, I don't think that viewership's gonna be that high, but a lot of people watched that, saw that, saw how pathetic it was. That does That is not a good look for us, and we need to fix that, right? But number one, it's just way too late in these games' lifespans. If they had cared, if they were going to fix it, they would have fixed it a hell of a lot earlier than this. So it is a bit of a shame that this has come this late, but it's still just, I still want to see it. I still want as many eyes on the absolute clusterfuck that is going to be Street Fighter V and Tekken 7 as possible, so that more negativity can swirl around because those games absolutely unequivocally deserve it. Which is a fairly negative opinion to have, right? But they deserve it. <laughs> That's the thing, like, I don't, I, I don't want to just be sitting here and shitting on those games, right? Like, that's the one thing I can't... I shouldn't say the one thing. There are multiple things about Guilty Gear Strive that I can't knock. But the netcode is definitely one of them. They nailed the online. Like, it still has its flaws, for sure. But there's definitely a hell of a lot more positive than negative. Which is not the same for Tekken 7 or Street Fighter V. There's a lot more negative going on there than positive. And so, like, I just... I hope, I hope that there's enough there to at least make them learn their lesson and not repeat the same mistakes for the next version of their game. Because you best believe, I mean, like I said, I would love to just automatically say I'm buying King of Fighters 15, I'm here for it, I'm ready for it, I want it all over me, inside of me, wherever it can fit, I want it, right? But I can't, I can't commit to that. I will not commit to that. Because they do not have a proven track record of quality. And... Right now, neither does Tekken or Street Fighter. So I wouldn't commit to buying either of those, you know, Tekken 8, if that's even a thing right now, or Street Fighter 6. I'm going to sit and wait and see, and I hope that winds up being the mentality for everybody moving forward, that we don't just trust these people to get it right, because they're clearly not capable of getting it right without pressure. So you got to apply that pressure and hope that it works out. And so maybe these tournaments are going to be, like, one more reason for people to doubt for people to not just automatically commit to getting these games we'll see anyway it's enough for me let me know how many of you just forgot about evo completely that's what i'm curious about i want to know how many people are even like cognizant of it existing they even care about it that's the thing that i'm curious about anyway enough thank you all for listening catch y'all next time peace